Good day children. Today we move on to the next poem from unit 9 titled The Tale of Custard the Dragon from the textbook First Flight. The poem The Tale of Custard the Dragon was written by Frederick Ogden Nash. Frederick Ogden Nash was an American poet who was famous for his light verse. He was known as a producer of humorous poetry. He received Sarah Joseph Hale Award in 1964. Now, the speciality about this poem is that it is written in the style of a ballad. A ballad is a song or poem that tells a story. So, you, I'm sure you are all familiar with ballads uh, which you know narrate uh, stories of uh, courage, heroism. But this poem is a humorous ballad. Uh, which is almost similar to a parody. So, let's read the poem. Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little grey mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a really or truly a little pet dragon. Now, look at the first stanza. The poet is introducing us to a little girl named Belinda who lived in a little white house. Now, she lived with some creatures who were her pets. Now, who were they? They were the black kitten, a grey mouse, a yellow dog, a little red wagon and a creature which the poet says was really and truly a dragon. Uh, wagon, I hope you know that it is a vehicle used to transport goods or any uh, or for any other purpose. That's a wagon. Okay. And so, these are the things with which uh, Belinda lived. Okay. Now, the name of the little black kitten was Ink and the little grey mouse, she called him Blink. And the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard, but the dragon was a coward and she called him Custard. Now, here, I hope you know that uh, mustard refers to the uh, uh, a yellow coloured flower. Okay, and uh, coward means weakling. So, the poet is explaining the names of all these animals which are tamed by Belinda. So, he says that the name of the black kitten is Ink and the name of the grey mouse is Blink. The little yellow dog had yellow colour and therefore she called him Mustard. And since the dragon was a coward, which means a weakling, she called him Custard. Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath, mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose and really or truly or daggers on his toes. So, in this stanza, spikes means it is a thin pointed surface. Okay, and scales, I am sure you are all familiar with scales, those th uh, thin bony plates which protects the skin of fish and reptiles if you have seen. Then underneath something below. Fireplace, I am yeah, sure you are all familiar with what a fireplace is, it is an outdoor structure of brick, stone or metal to open a fire. Dagger means a sharp knife. Okay, so in this stanza, the poet is describing the dragon which had sharp teeth, big sharp teeth, spikes on top, and on the lower part of it, it had scales which were uh, which protected its skin. His mouth is compared to a fireplace because it is assumed that you know dragons can release fire from the mouth, and even his nose is compared to a chimney which is used to pass out smoke. So, I am sure you, you know if you have watched uh, cartoons in, and you know uh, or even certain uh, animated movies you would have seen how a dragon is portrayed you know with fire emitting from its mouth and uh, you know smoke coming out of its nose and his feet is described like a sharp knife which is a dagger. Okay. Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chased lions down the stairs. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage but Custard cried for a nice safe cage. So here um, barrel means drum, chased is to hunt or follow, rage, anger. Okay. So now the poet explains the inner strength or the bravery of all these various characters. You know, he says that you know, Belinda was as brave as a group of bears and Ink and Blink was so brave that you know they could even hunt lions. So here you know the poet is showing us the bravery of the kitten and the little mouse that could even hunt a lion. And the dog was 
very brave just like an angry tiger but compared or, or when you contrast with all of them was the dragon custard now custard was not uh, as brave because he was afraid of everything and all that he always asked for was a safe cage okay belinda tickled him she tickled him unmerciful ink blink and mustard they rudely called him percival they all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the really or truly or cowardly dragon now here tickled means stroke okay here it means to tease and unmerciful very cruel percival now percival is a reference to a knight who belonged in king arthur's court okay uh, so he is a uh, it's from the tale uh, so uh, it's believed uh, that you know one of the bravest knight in king arthur's court was named as percival uh, belinda uh, now in the stanza belinda is you know stroking the dragon in a very cruel manner we can say because you know she is teasing him uh, very uh, you know unmercifully and ink and blink and mustard they made fun of him by comparing him to the brave knight uh, percival percival was thought to be very brave but he ran away due to lack of courage he was he was supposed to be uh, he was thought to be a brave knight in king arthur's court but at the time of a crucial time he ran away because he lacked courage so they uh, you know ink blink and mustard teased custard uh, you know as referring him to percival and they used to tease the dragon while sitting uh, in their little red wagon they were all sitting in the little red wagon and teasing custard belinda giggled till she shook the house and blink said weak which is giggling for a mouse ink and mustard rudely asked his age when custard cried for a nice safe cage giggled to laugh weak it is a sound made by a mouse now here the poet is saying that you know belinda used to laugh so loudly that her voice echoed in the house blink the mouse used to laugh and make a sound of weak and on the other hand ink and mustard would tease custard by asking his age whenever he used to ask for a nice safe cage suddenly suddenly they heard a nasty sound and mustard growled and they all looked around meowch cried ink and oo cried belinda for there was a pirate climbing in the window so here if you see nasty means bad or unpleasant growled bark okay bark of a dog pirate you know who a pirate is somebody who robs a ship uh, in sea winda is basically referring to window okay it is referring to window just to have the proper rhyme scheme correct that is why the poet has used uh, winda instead of window okay winda means window here so while all of them were making fun of the dragon they suddenly heard someone entering the house so when they looked towards the window they, they saw a pirate climbing up the wall and the dog barked at him the kitten meowed to him belinda cried oo because you know all of them were scared of the pirate because he is somebody who robs ships pistol in his left hand pistol in his right and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright his beard was black one leg was wood it was clear that the pirate meant no good so a uh, pistol a handgun cutlass is a short sword with a curved blade usually uh, seen on a pirate you know if you look at the image of a pirate you know that's usually seen with a pirate so the poet is describing the appearance of the pirate and he says that you know pri- the pirate was holding handguns in both his hands and had a little sword too and he was holding a sword with his teeth he had a black beard and his one leg was made of wood so which means that you know though the pirate was a disabled person he was still uh, you know frightening all the he, he had a frightening appearance and frightened the other characters moreover he intended to harm them belinda paled and she cried help help but mustard fled with a terrified yelp ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and little mouse blink strategically mouse hold so paled means turn yellow due to fear uh, yelp it is a short sharp cry trickled here refers to run strategically planned okay and mouse hold is the how hole where mouse lives so when all of them saw the pirate they all got scared 
and Belinda was so frightened that she turned yellow due to fear and started crying for help. Master the dog started crying for help too. And the kitten ink ran towards the bottom of the house as if he had already planned for it. And uh, the mouse ink ran into his little mouse hole in order to save himself. But up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. With a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm, he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. So, snorting here means a sudden explosive sound made through one's nose. Okay, and clashed means fight or fought. Dungeons, dungeon means an underground prison. Clatter, clank is the sound of a, a hard object which uh, falls on each other. Like when two pots or pans falls on each other, you know. And uh, jangling squirm means it is the sound of again a hard object falling on another object. Robin is a bird. So when all the other characters that were earlier defined as very brave, they all got so scared. And the dragon did the most unexpected thing. Because he was always lying around crying for a safe cage. Now, in such a situation, when the pirate was there to attack them, the dragon jumped onto the pirate and made such a strong sound with his nose. It was as if an engine was producing that sound. And not just that, he hit his tail on the ground with great force that it produced a heavy sound of metal being, uh, you know, rubbed against each other in an, un in an underground prison. And he attacked the pirate just like how a robin bird would attack its uh, prey, which is the worm. Okay. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. He fired two bullets, but they didn't hit and custard gobbled him every bit. So gaped means to stare with uh, your mouth wide open. Gulped means swallow. Grog is a drink. Okay, flagon is a container which is made of silver in which uh, a drink is stored. And gobbled means to swallow hurriedly. Uh, so here the pirate got so shocked by the dragon's reaction that he opened his mouth wide with shock. And to gather some strength, he drank some alcohol from a container in his pocket. And after gathering some courage, he fired two bullets on the dragon, but he missed it. And Custard the dragon ate every bit, bit of this fierce looking pirate. Okay, so Custard just swallowed the uh, pirate quite hurriedly. Okay, Belinda embraced him, Mustard licked him. No one mourned for this, his pirate victim. Ink and blink in glee did guide it around the dragon that ate the pirate. So, embraced means to hug. Mourned means to feel sorry for uh, someone's death. Victim is somebody who is suffering, the sufferer. Glee is delight and gyrate means danced. So here, when the pirate was dead, Belinda hugged the dragon and mustard licked him. No one was sad uh, because of the uh, death of the pirate, whereas they were all happy. And ink and blink both were running around the dragon in happiness. So here the poet is saying that, you know, all these characters were very happy and they were showing their gratitude towards the dragon because he had saved them. But presently up spoke little Doc Mustard. I would have been twice as brave if I had been flustered. And up spoke ink and up spoke blink. We would have been three times as brave, we think. And Custard said, I quite agree that everybody is braver than me. Flustered means upset or confused. So after they thanked and showed their love towards a dragon, these animals changed their mind. You know, they were reminded of how they used to make fun of, you know, the dragon as a coward and now they are all praising him so you know suddenly the dog said that you know it was just uh, because of some confusion that you know he wasn't able to do anything otherwise he would have been uh, you know twice as brave as custard and ink and blink also said that you know they would have been three times braver than custard to all this drag the you know custard the dragon said that he completely agrees with all of them who were more powerful and braver than him Belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little grey mouse and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon and her really truly a little pet dragon. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chase lions down the stairs. 
Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage but Custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. So finally the poet uses the same lines, uh, the same lines he used in the first stanza. He uses the same lines to show that you know after this terrific episode in which the dragon was the true hero or the real hero whereas all the other animals you know they had undermined him uh, saying that they were more powerful than him and could have handled the situation in a much better way. The poet is saying that you know the life started again in the same manner. Belinda is still living in that little white house with ink, blink, mustard and custard and they are all very brave whereas the dragon is still a coward who always wants to stay safe in his cage. Okay, I hope uh, you all understood the poem. So, the various poetic devices used in the poem are in the first stanza you have a repetition which is the word little is repeated in the first stanza in lines 1, line 2 and line 3. Then repetition comes in the third stanza, the last line and Relio truly daggers on his toes is repeated in stanza, it comes in stanza 1, then it comes in stanza 3, then stanza 5 and stanza 14 also it is repeated. Then there is a repetition is used in stanza 6 there is when custard cries for a nice safe cage. Okay, Then a repetition comes in the last two stanza. It is a repetition of the first two stanza. Okay, The second uh, poetic device used is anaphora. Anaphora is used in stanza 1 and uh, and uh, is repeated uh, stan uh, the lines 3 and 4 begins with and a uh, stanza 1 anaphora then stanza 2 lines 2 and 3 and the little and the little is again anaphora then comes oxymoron oxymoron is when you use two words with opposite meanings so in stanza 1 uh, last line pet dragon is an oxymoron because you don't usually keep dragons as pets isn't it so it is an oxymoron here pet dragon. Then comes simile. In stanza 2 you have simile where uh, the little yellow dog is uh, compared to a, the, uh, to a mustard. Okay. Then in stanza 3 mouth like a fireplace again is a simile there. The mouth of the dragon is compared to a fireplace. So that simile then stanza 4, the first line, Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. The simile showing the strength of Belinda. The third line, Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage. So comparing Mustard's braveness to an angry tiger is again simile. Then stanza 10, snorting like an engine is a simile. Clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon is simile. Like a robin at a worm is also simile. Okay, so these are the examples of simile. Then you have metaphor which is stanza 3, line 3, chimney for a nose, comparing the nose of the dragon to a chimney. So that is metaphor, so that is an example of metaphor. Then you have assonance, assonance is a use of the vowel sound. So as brave as a barrel, so that whole line can be, you can see it as assonance okay then you have assonance in uh, stanza stanza 12 uh, no one moaned o sound is repeated then ink and blink e the i sound is repeated eight the pirate a sound is repeated okay then you have allusion which is when you're comparing to a, uh, a fan fantasy character or a mythological character uh, or a place you call it as an allusion so here Percival is an allusion used. Percival was a knight in the King Arthur's army. Okay, so Percival is an allusion. That's in stanza 5. Then you have personification in the same line, uh, stanza 5, line 2. Ink, blink and mustard, they rudely called him Percival. So, ink, blink and mustard are given human qualities. They are animals, isn't it? They are given human qualities. So, it's personification there. Then in stanza 6, you have onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is the use of various sounds. So in stanza 6 you have giggled, weak. These are examples of onomatopoeia. 
then stanza 7 growled meowch oo then in stanza 9 yelp is also onomatopoeia then stanza 10 clatter clank jangling is an example of onomatopoeia then comes consonants that is the repetition of the consonant sounds and stanza 7 first line suddenly suddenly the sir sound is repeated that is for consonants then we have alliteration alliteration is used in stanza 8 he held line 2 he held her sound or the h sound is repeated beard was black the b sound b sound is repeated then you have 11th stanza gulped some grog g sound g sound is repeated 12th stanza glee did gyrate g sound g sound is repeated then you have transferred epithet which is you transfer a quality uh, to another thing of one quality to another thing that is in stanza stanza 9 second line terrified yelp terrified yelp is a transferred eth- uh, epithet that is dog being terrified is that emotion is transferred to its yelp or the sound it makes so transferred epithet is terrified yelp okay then you have various imagery is used in the poem mouth like a fireplace chimney for a nose brave as a barrel full of bears brave as a tiger in a rage went to the pirate like a robin at a worm these are all imagery used okay then uh, the way the pirate is described in stanza 8 is actually imagery okay so the poet has used a lot of imagery here the rhyme scheme of the poem is a a b b okay so i hope you have understood the poem thank you children